Welcome to TechZine TV. Welcome to TechZine TV. We're at uh, Dreamforce in San Francisco, the Salesforce conference, the biggest one. And um, we're talking to Ayung An. She's Microsoft CEO at Salesforce, I guess. That's me. Um, um, nice to see you too. Thank you. Welcome to our show. You have announced, I think last week, the Microsoft Fabric. Yeah, I want to talk to you a bit about that because yeah. it's it's an orchestration of agents. Yep. You're not the only one in the market trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So I want to start with you about what's different in Microsoft approach to orchestrating agents, controlling them, governing them, securing them, yep. basically that. So can you explain a bit what the fabric is, how it works? Absolutely. So Microsoft Agent Fabric is really our answer to agent sprawl. So there's a lot of agents that are being built across the board, right? It's not just you building your agents. Every application is embedding an agent, building an agent. Your partners are building an agent. So how do you go about making sure that you can make the most of all the agents, but also know what they're doing? And so Microsoft Agent Fabric um, empowers organizations to govern, manage, and observe all of their agents wherever it was built. Um, and our goal really is, in addition to, of course, the orchestration, we help you layer on additional layers of policies or guardrails to make sure that you, all of your agent to agent and agent to system interactions are protected in the right way. And then ultimately you get a visual map of all of those elements coming together. So you have all your MCP servers, you have your agents, you have all of your LLMs, and you can see in that map how it's all connected, um, how they're interacting, how they're performing, and et cetera. Are you taking the same approach as you did with all the APIs with Microsoft? Because Microsoft, in the end, was an EPaaS platform, right? uh, securing in Correct. integrations. And then you were kind of a man in the middle, mm -hmm. like the API is connected to Microsoft and Microsoft was like the hub taking the connection and pointing it somewhere else. And mm -hmm. in the middle, you could control a lot. Is that the same approach you're doing with agents? Are you being the man in the middle again? We are, we are to a certain extent. So we wanted to make sure as we're thinking about this agentic world, how do we make it as seamless for customers as possible? And this is what we call kind of a digital deja vu, mm -hmm. where a lot of what we're seeing with like the agentic transformation looks a lot like the imperatives that were put upon organizations at the time of cloud computing or digital transformation. So we're taking a lot of the foundations of what we have built for APIs and what we believe is really fundamental to organizations, right? Like building in that composable nature, taking an API first approach to integration, things like that. And we feel like that serves as a great foundation as you're going into the agenda world as well. Ultimately, it's APIs that serve as actions that empower your agents to be able to do the things that you need them to do. And we think a lot of the capabilities that we provide as our core platform also lend itself really well. So we could have built a completely different platform and a completely tool, different tool for it, but we are the industry leader in API management and governance, right? So building on top of our gateway and our API management policy or management uh, solutions made a lot of sense. Building upon our uh, leadership and integration made a lot of sense and being able to handle MCP inter um, interactions as well as A to A. All of that kind of culminates into how we think about the agentic world and how we empower customers. So we do see ourselves serving as that interactive, like middle um, management layer, but also the oversight of everything that you're doing with other platforms as well, because you're going to have a lot of agents across various ecosystems that you're going to have to manage and handle. Yeah, because when I talk to your competitors or other big SaaS players, platform players that want to orchestrate agents, they can usually only control the agents they're building on their own platform. Right. And when we're talking about agents being built on third party platform, it's really hard to manage them because totally. there's usually no APIs available to manage those agents or there's no real control mechanism. Yep. And when I talk to them about how you're going to manage that, yeah, they, they, they say they can't at this moment, but they expect a sort of kind of new protocol to pop up, like more on a hypervisor level to mm -hmm. control those mm -hmm. agents, but that's not there yet. We have MCP and A2A, but that's purely for the data being transferred, right. not so much about the context and the layer above. Yep. I think the thing that really resonates with CIOs about the Microsoft Agent Fabric solution that we launched is really the governance layer. 
right? And the to your point, the um, open ecosystem narrative mm-hmm. that we have, because we are being very, um, very mindful of the fact that not every customer is going to place their bets all on one product Mm -hmm. and we need to be able to provide interoperability with as many things as possible. And then on top of that, um, thinking about governance or security as an afterthought is really, really tough. Like my, I was just having a conversation with my colleague who explained it as, you know, you could choose to do governance and security later, but it's kind of like having uh, like knee pads when you're learning how to roller skate, like, could you put that on and it gives you the ability to go a little faster and you can like have a little bit more ability to innovate faster and do things more because you have that guardrail and the, yeah. you know, the reservation built in. So you don't have to be as worried. And we want it to be not an afterthought, but a forethought of how you think about the agentic world as well. Um, if you compare a bit the API world with the agent world, because that's kind of the evolution you're trying to do with meals of family. Mm-hmm. Um, with APIs, it was an application connection and a lot of the UI capabilities and user management and user walls were more into application side of things. Mm-hmm. With AI agents, I get the feeling customers expect the agent layer to take into account the user management rights. Is that mm-hmm. something Niels was also looking at? With our- we are. So we're looking at actually building in governance at a few different layers. So for example, we have a capability called, so maybe I'll start by kind of laying out the capabilities and how it fits Mm -hmm. in. So we have um, a pillar for discover, which is really about how do you put all of your agents, LLMs, MCP tools and servers all in one place so that all your agents and humans can find it. Mm -hmm. In that, we're also adding in the future some scanner capabilities so that you don't have to manually add. You have the ability to essentially scan your ecosystem and bring them into the registry. The next is the broker, which is really about the orchestration. The thing that receives the prompt and figures out working with the LLM, how to solve that problem, which agent and which tool to go to to orchestrate it. How we think about governance in that layer is actually every ingress and egress is protected with governance. So even by default, without you even having to think about it, it's actually built in um, to the product so you don't have to layer it on. And then as you're thinking about additional layers of agent level security, you have the ability to add on additional layers of policies specifically for your different types of interaction, whether that's like PII detection, I don't want, you know, my agent to receive any credit card information, so don't store it. That kind of a thing is also possible on an agent level and then also on a wider level. And then the last but not least was the visual map I was talking about, which is called Asia Visualizer, which allows you to see a map of everything coming together. We also see a future way to integrate with an HR or an active directory to get more of the user walls within. That's a very interesting call out. It's not something we have uh, discussed or have in the roadmap, but something that comes up a lot in our recent conversations is about like access management and, yeah. and, and things like that. So it's something that we're actively discussing as part of our vision. Yes. If you're building an agent with integrations to third parties, and you're going to be the man in the middle, usually you can tell an agent like, Hey, I want to connect to this application. Here's the, uh, here's the agent to talk to and, or here's the API to talk to and here's the documentation involved. So now you're going to be in the middle. So now you're going to tell the agent, talk to the Mulesoft fabric agent or something mm-hmm. through an MCP or HOA connection. But how does it know what it's going to be about? Yeah. So we are, our, our thinking around that is that you should have domain driven brokers. So an agent that has too many actions or too many um, tools in it and in, in its ability starts to hallucinate. So you need to limit it to about like eight to 10 actions, let's say that it can yeah. handle, which means in order for the, the broker to really be effective, it needs to be a bit more domain driven, whether it's an employee uh, broker or I don't know, whatever the specific types of domains are, 
And in that, then you should be able to have a situation where they know exactly how to navigate the various types of brokers mm -hmm. because it only has access to the ones that are actually within its domain versus, you know, the whole gamut of agents or the tools that are available in your ecosystem. Okay, but let's say you built an agent with a connection to, let's say, Workday, which has their own agent yeah. talking with MCP. Can you just put the mules of fabric in the middle and let it talk in the same way, maybe only adding a mules of for connection ID or something that builds up now is, hey, that's, that's customer X, Y, Z. And is it, is it kind of tunneling the same type of communication back to Workday then? Or it certainly could be that. Or do you need to adjust the whole agent in a way to talk to Millsoft and then it relays? No, no. That's why we're really, um, really focused on making sure that we provide support for industry best practice protocols. That's why we have support for MCP and being able to actually turn your APIs into MCP servers, you know, and using natural language prompts, big priority for us and something that we've delivered and same with A2A. So as more protocols come about so that we don't necessarily, you don't have to translate it into something related to agent fabric, but really serving as that integration layer that helps you translate anything to any, anything is really our core. Okay. So it's really easy to, if you already started building to put Microsoft in the middle on a later date because yeah, not everyone is going to find out about your fabric or implementing it from the start. Totally. I mean, it, we have made it so that the jumpstart for existing customers is very easy because you can turn your APIs. They serve mm -hmm. as the best tools for your agents. And then we're also making it super easy for uh, new customers as well to onboard into the platform and how to use actually uh, agent fabric. And you're now a Salesforce company. Do you have more capabilities on the Salesforce platform to manage agents or kill agents or prevent things from happening yeah. compared to third party solutions? I'm yeah. wondering how that works. There's a lot of interoperability happening. Um, so, uh, for example, MuleSoft is not necessarily investing a ton into building agents because no. we're part of a product and a yeah. Salesforce ecosystem that is really good at doing that. And Agent Force really is the key there. But if you look at the Agent Force suite, some of the governance capabilities that are provided out of the box for Agent Force is actually powered by MuleSoft. So where it makes sense for us to lend our capabilities to Agent Force, we're embedding. And then where it makes for us sense for us to interoperate with Agent Force as an example, as an agent building tool, we're doing that. And then the visualization tool I mentioned is actually also going to be available in agent um, observability so mm -hmm. that as you're building out that ecosystem, not only is it available through Nielsoft, but also available through agent course tooling as well. Yeah. Because what triggered me a bit during a Q&A with Benioff earlier, he said, with Salesforce, we don't try to orchestrate all your organization agents. The kind of, he kind of didn't include Nielsoft there because that's <laughs> kind of what the fabric is doing. But I'm guessing this is a way of Nielsoft still being a standalone product as well without being part of Salesforce. I think that's a great pickup, which is that we are certainly a Salesforce company, but yeah. we also have customers who are have investments broader than Salesforce. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we always continue to stay neutral to your point as an yeah. iPaaS company and as much more than that as well. Okay. Thank you for this great conversation. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We'll be back from Dreamforce with more videos. So keep watching. Thank you for watching TechScene TV, the channel about enterprise technology that brings you IT insights and analyses from events all around the globe. We cover everything, everywhere. Visit TechScene.eu for more written in-depth articles and analysis, or keep watching TechScene.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels and share your favorite videos with your colleagues. We'll see you soon.